Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. We are back on the grass today. The track is fast. PETA's always fast. However, I will say on Sunday it was not looking fast in the last two races. <laughs> we got a monsoon of rain. That's why we were off the grass yesterday. But we're back on it today. Brian and Samantha with you uh, for a card of night today and this rainbow brian yeah it's growing you're ready to take a crack at it yeah four hundred fifty thousand, almost a half a million you and i were talking last night about the saturday card and phenomenal card it is but there you see it there i love these new graphics are a lot of people on twitter were mentioning them too if you haven't seen now the, the rainbow six and uh which we have always show but the late pick five or the pick fives as well have been kind of counting down the live tickets which I think is super cool. And here's the rainbow now, almost up to $500,000 in that estimated pool. And the bigger it gets, the quicker it grows. So massive, massive pool uh, looming today. It is, and it's a good card as well. Yeah. And kicking things off, like I said, we are on the grass, uh, but we kick it off on the tapita, and Brian's got that early pick five ticket. Yeah, I think there's, what, just four scratches on the card, a couple yeah. of them here in the opener, and they were two long shots, and that's really it. So uh, that's very, very good to see four deep here in race number two the top pick is the two tis aaron there's a single in race three and that is my best bet at atlanta alexandra and then a two by two double to get out of the sequence in race four the two tap its direction and in race number five the nine and that is my long shot click a tap out there now there is a key draw in in race nine so we should be really getting some good prices now with hot blooded coming in the 13 to race nine that's a 24 dollar early pick five ticket for me i like it and kicking things off their maiden thirty five thousand dollar claimers here we scratch the four and the six uh, both of them <laughs> uh, not really no. big players here but the seven she take she takes cash uh, always on top for you yeah i guess we yeah. see this exactly the same way i didn't lose anything here um i like being outside i like yeah. getting back to the tapita it's Safi. It's uh, it's it's Irad who will bid us uh, adieu tomorrow, right? To, to later today, yeah, maybe, to yeah. Head to over to uh, Saudi, Saudi yeah. to ride White Barrio in the big race out there. But uh, this is a good post. It's a very tricky race. I'm surprised we kind of we have it exactly the same. You know, there are different ways you can go in here, but I do think uh, that she takes cash will be tough. Uh, the number three Lorraine on the class drop here, but going to try the Tapita for the first time. Yeah, I just think this is a massive drop, Samantha. I mean, these are $35,000 maiden claimers, and she's faced so much better, especially here at the championship meet, and she's run pretty good, too. Graham's going to put, Graham Motion's going to put blinkers on. Um, I, I just think, you know, this is her kind of crew, and I'm sure. Yeah. Um, she, Graham is 35% adding first blinkers. That's Big move. a sharp, sharp move. Yeah. And she's slightly raised, so maybe she's got some upside as well. I do think it is significant that Billy Thorinos yeah. had two in and he leaves one. No, I think that's a very, very good point. You beat me to it. He scratches out uh, the six and he leaves Bonmati in. And if you're not in the loop, Billy's been firing hot for yeah. about two to three weeks now. And Bonmati with the Hall of Famer Javier aboard might shake loose in here. We right. saw it yesterday. Speed was playing pretty darn good on the Tapita. Yeah, it was yesterday for sure. But with the exception of one race, right. it was very good. And uh, you got your long shot home with that yesterday. So yeah. congrats with Thank that. You. Race number two, it kicks off that early pick four. We start off uh, the pick four on the grass. So we'll take a look at my ticket. We Singling early, uh, this is my best bet here. Race three, I have no opinion on at all. It's a six-horse field. I feel like nothing really separates them. I'm just throwing the all ball at them. Uh, race five, I do have the two on top. Uh, or pardon me, race yeah, race five, I got the two on top. And I've got the 12 as well, dominate the moment. Now, on my late pick five, I did add a couple, but for the sake of the early pick four, those are the two uh, that I'm going to go down with. An $18 play. We are on the grass for this second race here today. It is firm. Uh, rails are at 38 feet. It's a mile. It's their $25,000 claimers here. And a few of these exiting the same race, but you went to Tiz Aaron, one that is not exiting the race. Yeah, I mean, she might be a little bit of a reach, but she's going to get back to the turf. She ran pretty well on it at Indiana, and she doesn't want to sprint, you know, five and a half on the Tapita. Um, I'm going to let you talk about your horse in a second. I, she's got some speed. There's not a lot of it in here, you know, and maybe no. she gets a jump on some of these. Yeah, that's what's really possible yeah. with her. Uh, well, look at the replay of Nadu Dudette uh, and Starlet Sophie here. 
I thought Nadu Det ran really well considering uh, she didn't have any type of uh, – the second half they picked it up, you see there. But uh, she really uh, – she was so far out of it, and she was the only one to run on. And the rails were at 59 feet this day. You don't run like she's running right now on a day where the rails are like that. Starlet Sophie's the eight. I don't want anything to do with her, to be honest. She just kind of ran with the setting. But – Nadudet was the only one that made up any ground, and I think if she can do that there, that kind of goes to your point. There's not a lot of speed here. Yeah. Maybe she can do it here. Yeah, I just don't like her running style, and she's over 14 with seven underneath finishes. With all that being said, she is clearly, clearly the horse to beat. Uh, the eight horse here we haven't seen in some time. Oh, for 11. Um, what do you do with her? She's your horse, just a little slower, so you put her underneath. That's all. Because yeah, yeah you know, she doesn't have any speed at all, and she's not as good as Nadudet, so she's going to have a real, real problem getting up there. Uh, the number seven, you just round out yep. uh, the whole field. Race three, uh, seven furlongs on this fast main track. There's state bred fillies here. This is, uh, I'm glad you've got a good, uh, yep. best bet here because I throw a dart at this uh, race for me. Go take it away with at Atlanta Alexandra. You know, there might be some people doing that, and, and I, I get it. But, you know, the thing is, she's okay, and she added Lasix last time, and she seemed like she really moved up. And you, you say this a lot. And I never really thought about it, but you got an older horse now adding Lasix, and you can see it in her form. She was just a lot better because her yeah. two starts against winners prior to that, she didn't do anything at all. She middle moved last time into a pace that basically fell apart, but she held nicely. The winner was pretty good that day. It's the group that's all here. They're all stuck in neutral. They're all the yeah. same horse on paper. I think she's just better than them, and so she's my best bet. And uh, they're all horses that have, at one point or another, have faced each other. Yeah, exactly. Too. And that's kind of the tricky thing with her. Now, uh, I like the fact that she is getting a little more distance. That will right. help as well. Uh, the two, too much Vino. Billy Thorinos ran well. But here's the thing. the great I don't like the great analogy no. race, really. No, no, you can't like it. You're right. I yeah. couldn't agree with you more. That's why I put her in second. That's why I have a strong opinion in here. She did run well. But she basically walked on the lead. I know she got nagged a little bit, but they couldn't possibly go any slower at that trip. Great analogy. I think she's in this weekend. I mean, she's yeah. she's just no great shakes. It's as simple as that. Um, and now they're going to bet her a little bit more today. Billy's been so hot. We just said it. But, yeah, it's just, you know, cutting back for her could be a little sharp, too. It could. And then they're going to bet Principia the four. But... <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I would no. be saying, wait, first off the claim for Ori Delgado. Yeah. You get Ibrat in, in the saddle. I mean, it was a big win last time, and they better, but who did she beat? Yeah, no, and you can see her races at the level. They're just not product. They're not competitive right. at, at all, and she had to dip to a 2L last time to get it done. You can see she was 2-1 to one for a low percentage trainer, right. so she, she was supposed to win different set of circumstances today. That is three of them for you. When we come back, Ron Nicoletti will have that rainbow six ticket with $450,000 in the estimated pool today. We'll be right back. And uh, they're off. past performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with drf all access past performances go to drf.com and use coupon code one free pp for a free single card today Welcome back to Goldstream today. Brian and Samantha with you on this Thursday nine race card. Uh, Brian, we've got $450,000 in this estimated pool today with the Rainbow Six. Ron Nicoletti, the man, has got the ticket. I'll let you take us through it. Yeah, Ronnie will be back with us tomorrow. We'll take a look at it here, the old 4320. He's got a single today. He came up with the 4320 yesterday. Did not have a single. It's Oxymore in race five. I, I think a lot of people are just going to auto default to, to him. I'm so so against him today, but uh, I totally get it. I mean, he's nine to five in there. And then Ronnie spreads a little bit more. 
You can see too deep in race number six with uh, he's certainly got Kozal on there. And then this late pick three is a three by three by four late pick three. And I'm going to guess and I'm pretty confident in this guess that his long shot as it usually is in the finale on the turf in race number nine as he goes four deep in there. And Ronnie's come back firing too, a 25 to one long shot in the finale on pay that 1.8 million dollar yeah, rainbow that's day. sunday yeah, yeah. Boom. so i've got a long shot that race too all right i like it yeah so uh, a good one to kick things off well a good one i mean a tricky one here yeah. to kick things off their maiden claimer twelve thousand five hundred dollars a uh, mile on this fast main track mm -hmm. here we kind of have a situation of the gang is all here but you went to uh tab its direction yeah i don't like the gang i mean the, right. we'll, we're going to show the sergusa race it's just there's nothing to love in that out of that race now tap its direction the two oh here we go all right we can show it's fine so let's show okay here's sir Goosa. doesn't he have to win uh yes he couldn't they bet him this day too um you could talk about it i mean you're involved here yeah well that was his first time yeah. on the dirt ever so i gave him some credit for that and look at antillian this horse was eight to five so they bet him even more i don't really like anybody outside of that ginger sap jack is meh for me, uh, I thought Sir Goosa ran really well first. That that one turn mile, people think that it's a little bit easier on them than like the, t the two turns on the grass, and it's not. It's it's harder. Yeah, I just thought he had to win there. I mean, Antillian is nothing. Um, so it was a super slow race. Yeah. But, uh, so Tappet's direction, he kind of sort of had a bear off. You lose he start did. last Big time. time. So I'm going to forgive him for it. Um, and then I look at the race two back. It's just better than this group. Yeah. Carson came back to win. It looked pretty good beating the bottom, mm -hmm. but came back to win. So that flatters him a little bit. And I don't like the race, and that's just why I went 2-4. Tis a Duke. I mean, hey, if nothing else, he's put two, two okay Right. races back to back for the first yeah. time so she kind of said she said it perfect it's a tricky race here to kick off this rainbow yeah it is because again you can like you can live and die by the carson race yeah. or by the antillian race you yeah just no that's to, it it's a great point to pick your poison i love battalion bound last time he was my best bet of the day and i just thought he was not good at all uh yeah, so this horse galloped out really well mm -hmm. and i think with paco lopez in the saddle maybe it'll get him a little bit more aggressively in the mix of things and he's lightly raced yeah. that that was my my move with him is he just yeah. has that maybe a little bit more room for some improvement here but i i don't know either <laughs> when i watch him run he's almost just looks turfy to me and he does have a kitten's joy mare yeah. so uh but i think he's too cheap for the grass so mm -hmm. I, we probably won't ever see him there yeah because he'd be he'd struggle for for a quarter on the grass yeah. in the bottom exactly race number five it kicks off that late pick five it kicks it off on the grass i've got the ticket put together here and some stronger opinions for me in this latter half uh you see there in race five i did add uh, the 13 and uh, and the seven, I just spread a little bit more versus what I did in my early pick four. Uh, the single for me, Kozal, the six. Uh, also in race eight, uh, Abaduncia. I'm taking a shot with here. I don't like anybody in that race. And then my long shot is the eight, Samburu, eight to one. I'm, they might bet this worse too. So mm -hmm. well, with the scratch, although the scratch was a long shot, but still uh, $30 is the play here in a competitive field on the grass here, Brian, the one scratches out a rose for Raven, the 13 hot blooded will draw in and the nine clickety cat for you. Yeah. The draw in is huge clickety -tap, clickety -tap. because um, the, the 30 to one is out a seven to two is in. Yes. So um, that's huge. So anybody you like probably is a better price now. And I would think with my long shots, a better price now too. Mm -hmm. uh, first time on the turf for Jose D'Angelo. Yeah. Hasn't run poorly on the turf um so i'm taking a shot i just don't like the two at all that's the bottom line to me what's he doing in here uh hopefully liking stretching out okay hopefully uh the race at monmouth where he was second to web slinger and that yeah. was when web slinger broke his maiden 
remember that day very vividly. Uh, that's where I was first introduced to the DJ Sable connections, and uh, that's a, a friendship that I'm very grateful for, and uh, we are too with uh, mm -hmm. Hades being a, a part of this race, and Oxymore couldn't get to him, and I get why you don't trust him, because yeah. how does a maiden horse defeat this horse, a Chad Brown runner, uh, in a race like that? That was his only two-turn turf try. I just feel like today is the day to, to step up. Yeah, I mean, he ran, a, he was fifth beating three and a quarter last time uh, and a very salty optional claimer, and now you can have him for a quarter. I mean, there's begging somebody to claim him, so yeah. um, just no. But I, I, he's clearly the best horse. Yes. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, the 12 dominate the moment. I wanted to show the replay of at Mammoth. This is uh, the first time in the barn of Gary Lee, but... This race here was extremely productive. Now, Dominate the Moment was n racing in a spot that at Monmouth you don't really have a chance. Now, he was 14 to 1 that day, so I get it here. Uh, but the winner in this race was second in the Grade 2 Fort Lauderdale and seventh in the Pegasus World Cup turf. You see Dominate the Moment just kicking on. Uh, late here and again it's just you the rails were out that day at, at, at Monmouth too I just it's so hard to, yeah. to run like he did and you see they all kind of finish with some interest which I like and King Max there you go he's yep. he's a solid horse we haven't seen him in a long time but I feel like he's one worth uh mentioning yeah it's a good horse there's there's no doubt about it um you know if, if he had run in December he'd be five to two three to one in yes. here he's got a terrible post that's a that's a problem too uh, he, he's a good horse, and he has every right to make a big, big dent in here. No doubt about it. Uh, the 13, hot-blooded. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You got to put him in, right? I mean, yeah. he's avoided claim last time, which I don't like at all, but he's maker and he's and he's uh, IRAD, so um, he's a player in here. Yeah. doesn't mean you have to take a price. She mentioned the 38 feet. If you printed early, I, I did. The rails were at 24 in the DRF. They're 38, so I'm glad you, you mentioned that. So just take note of that, too. Uh, race number six, late pick four. Brian has got the ticket. Yep. We'll take a look at that. <laughs> we don't have to talk too long about it. I can <laughs> promise you, you that. Uh, there you go. We talk about this a lot, though. Samantha puts these out a lot. I love it. In that, you know, have opinions and try to pop this thing four or five times. It's only 15 bucks if you want to play a $5 pick four. You want to add, obviously, you can do that, yep. too. But um, I don't like going deep on these sequences we got a little coverage in the last race and you know you can pop this thing five or six times and if it if three dollars for 50 cent turns into 42 and you hit it five times now you're off and running for for some ammo and some deeper spreadier bets that yep. that might warrant it i don't think that this is a sequence to warn and i don't think it's uh good to give out a big box car tickets that aren't going to pay that yeah you know i, I think that's you agree fair. With yep uh it's a competitive race, though, to kick things off. Seven furlongs on the main track. There's state bred fillies here. We've got a field of seven and, and some solid ones as well. And uh, you're on the four, Bell's Blue Bell. She uh, felt like finally woke up. Well, she got the fast dry land last time. Yeah, so exactly. I, yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree now. It's obvious she needs a fast main track. She's not going to run in the mud or in the slop as two and three back. But the race last time behind Star of Saturn, who I like, Bobby DeBona, has got a nice filly on his hands yeah. there. That was a good effort. Now, you know, they're all looking up at Kozal. I readily admit that, but Kozal's facing winners. She mm -hmm. ran off the screen last time. Maybe she comes back a little bit, and she'll be a really short price. So we'll take a little bit of a shot against her. Uh, that's that's fair. Let's see how she'll handle the seven furlongs. But again, yeah. you can't really gauge too much on her past performances of the seven furlongs because they were bad tracks that day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's look at Kozal, though, because she won against Open Company. I will say I don't think that this was that strong of a race but she did it in a really big way here and um i feel like the seven furlongs is going to be great for her. Uh, they asked her to gallop out that day and she did it with ease and, and this is open company too yeah open company made uh optional claimers uh yeah if she runs this race they can't beat her it's as simple yeah. as that she was awesome they better like she was going to be um so terry pompey's got a nice daughter of Kozan on her hands and as samantha said you know she's dipping in with state breads today mm -hmm. she is facing winners that was a not a good field i'll <laughs> just 
be no. G-rated and say that. But as she said, boy, did she do it the right way. She could be going places. She's a very nice filly. She is coming back in 19 yeah. days. That yeah. maybe makes good point. yours look a little. Like, if that's the knock I'm going to have on mm -hmm. her, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, the three Neom City gets Lasix for the first time now as a three-year-old, and she ran well to break her maiden. Against okay, open company, too. Yeah. You know, and they better that day, too. So she's okay as well. But, you know, my pick, admittedly, is, is facing a real nice one, and certainly the three Neon City is up against it today, facing winners and facing a really good horse. Race number seven, there's state bred fillies, five furlongs on the Tapita track here. It is a field of seven. And the number four, I don't have the four anywhere. All, All right. right, go for it. Well, she's just too fast for these, I thought. I mean, on the Tapita, she was really good last time sprinting on the Tapita. I, I don't really see any speed in here to run with her, you know? No, I know she didn't go quick last time, yeah. but she can. Well, also, and I, I get the two horses came back to win yeah. that she beat. Uh, but that was a day that the rail was good. The speed mm -hmm. was holding, and I felt like she, she just broke quick and yeah. got, boom, right to the rail. I feel like she's a little bit all dressed up. But to your point, the speed was yes good yesterday. Yeah. And she could just have the same situation. Yeah, no, it was a good rail that day. I have a R plus in my form as well. Uh, I, just, I don't know, just think she's simply too fast for him. That's all. Yeah. Cutting, uh, cutting back a half for a long, too. That does help. Uh. The two, Foxy Lady. Uh, you found a stat on Marty Drexler. Yeah, we showed the route stat yesterday. So this is good to show the sprint stat. You know, it's not like it's a massive negative. But, you know, three for 21. And, and I think it was... Remember I said yesterday the, the routes he was, I think, 5 for 13. I think he's over his last six sprinting on Tapita. Boy, we like Marty and the job he does. And yeah. he picked one up yesterday, right? But I, I just I wonder if maybe she's a little against it today. That's all. She could be maybe leaving with herself a, a, little, a little too bit. much to do. The 311 makes sense. Julie Stormfeld is the second off the claim. Yeah, exactly. And she did run well last time. The form seems to be <clears throat> excuse me, moving forward. So she's a player in here, but I don't. <clears throat> Again, I'm not sure if she's going to run out of room, too. A couple of these guys that I'll be you know, cutting back from to five, which is going to be a little tricky. Yeah, it is. Race eight, uh, the <clears throat> feature today, and it's a good one, too, on the dirt. A one-mile, one-turn, one-mile distance. Uh, we've got a field of seven. And the two for you, Steel Racer. Again, Mr. Marty Drexler. Coming back, <clears throat> excuse me, on 11 days. So, you know, we don't know what we're going to get there. I don't expect anybody to run with her early. She looks loose. Yeah. And we'll talk about your pick in a second. I promise you, <laughs> she's not American Rocket and Goddess of Fire. No. So this is a massive, massive drop, hidden drop for Steel Racer. Uh, now, she didn't really make a dent against either of those two, but there's nobody like that in here today. Yeah, and this was a sharp move by Marty to, to kind of see what's what's happening yeah. and just jam her in. Uh, it's the spacing for me, and she didn't really gallop out at all right. that time last race. I don't know. I wonder. If, but she's not in for a tag as well. I'd be yeah. more suspicious if she was in for a tag. The one to me, uh, look, this is more to me that I just don't like the remainder of the field. Yeah. Uh, we'll show the work. There's not – a lot going on but what i wanted to see is just you know how does she handle the dirt and she handles it well now she they're working her by herself uh this is a barn that admittedly i don't know a lot about but uh the races on the dirt that she has in peru are good ones. She gets Lasix on for the first time. She gets blinkers on. She's fit. That was the main thing I wanted to see from this is she's fit and she handles the dirt. Uh, now, when you're working a horse like this by themselves, you're only going to go as fast as they can go. That wasn't yeah. like a work that I'm just going to run to the windows on by any means. You but don't at like least solo drills. And I'm not a big fan of the solo drills. It, not if you can help it. But this my my comment about the barn is uh, this is probably a barn that doesn't have horses yeah. to put her in company with so you're just left with that and Javier lands here so yep. he must know something um trainers about eight percent lifetime we're starting to see the name again in the entry box he's got a few over the weekend um yeah. looked it up nothing going on uh thought about making this horse 20 to one thought about making this horse five to two i have absolutely <laughs> no idea yeah. if they're gonna bet what she's gonna do <clears throat> i thought it was somewhat now, they threw her to the Wolves at Keeneland in the mm -hmm. turf race. But with that being said, she's a group two winner. She's group one stakes place. I don't know what's going on over there in right. Peru. On the turf, and she was 77 to one in the Valley View. So that was like 
a little weird to me. Uh, it's good that Javier is here. You mentioned the L word. The Lasix goes on. I mean, I can't imagine there was anything at all in her dirt races in Peru. But if I'm in singling steel racer, listen, we like Marty and we like steel racer. There's nothing in this field at all. If she can run a little bit, she has, she'll, she'll have a chance in here. Yeah, she right? will. Yeah, I think so. The Great analogies in here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So maybe pay attention to the too much vino race in esoteric uh, a little earlier because yeah. that may conclude you in with the great analogy. Since you left, maybe, maybe c cuts back in distance, which is a good thing. <laughs> great analogy in her 65 buyers, eight to one in here. So that sells it right there. Uh, since you left, has got to make sense in here, right? The cutting yeah. back, she's outside what I think will be the favorite. It's Cassie. It's Irad. Kind of like the beat 16 optionals at Tampa though though yeah that's that's a problem <laughs> a little bit of a problem race number eight the finale today a mile and a 16th on the turf course uh, we scratched the two Bryce Canyon he wasn't really going to be a, a major player in this race I don't think uh, the five on top for you Ocala dream first off the claim for Laura Cesaris Bryce Canyon's going to run against uh, fly the W in that group on uh, Sunday there you have it look out right take note of that um uh, just a shot in here. I don't really like the favorites. You said you're going with the long shot. So, I, I listen, we're all kind of against the favorites in here. Yeah. Laura won another race yesterday at 12-1, to 1, by the way, yep. s in, somehow. Um, boy, she's sharp. She knows what she's doing. I like the cutback for this horse today. That will help. It, it should help. Yeah. That was a strong race exiting uh, in Aqueduct with Running Bee, who was yep. second in the grade two Fort Lauderdale. We'll show the replay of Samburu and Desolator. Desolator was a big price for Marty Drexler. I have no idea how this horse won. <laughs> I don't know how he was 16 to 1. I, I, this was so weird to me, this race was. Uh, Samburu ran very, very well here. Uh, I like the rider switch for one with Samburu. And look, you see him. He looks like he's going to win the race. And Desolator and Tyler Gaffleone just completely denied him. Uh Samburu galloped out really well and gets a little bit of extra extra distance. Yeah, he, listen, we're we're against the favorites in here. He's hardly impossible. Um, that I forget who it was, but somebody scratched out of that race. That was going to be like six to five You're right. or something. Yeah. Name escapes me, but you saw it there. He runs well, and now Mike Maker's going to claim him and put a Hall of Famer on him. So yeah, you could do worse. Uh, talk about the favorite, Whisper Not. Well, I mean, it's just a massive class drop of yeah. who he's been running against. That race on Pegasus Day with Ice Chocolate had become, been coming out of grade one and two races. Yeah. Headline news for Jimmy Toner and Joe Allen are, are good. Javier, speaking of which, gave J.P. Hellish the ride of the meat to, to get true. second. Yeah. Um, it's just a huge, huge drop. You look at the horses in the races that he's been facing, uh, massive drop. It is, but hard to trust, and that hard doesn't mean that you have to trust him nope. at a short price either. That is nine of them for you today. We're on the grass, fast, track, firm, turf course. We'll take a look at our lightning round here uh, yesterday. Uh, there was no denying socially selected. Oh, she's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, your pick ran as well to put her to the test yeah. a little bit, but uh, it is uh, – Stakes in the future for socially selective and uh, another dominant performance. Your horse, who's graded stakes place, Jafaros, made yeah. her work, and she's going to do good things for Terry Pompey yeah. this year. But socially selective now, I think um, the guys in the office called Bill Mott and they said, uh, you know, he said stakes in the future, and I. I don't know. She could look like a, a grade one Madison horse to me at Keeneland. We'll see yeah, what the Hall of Famer does. But. Maybe her and Mary quite contrary oh ship over together. There yeah. you go. Uh, breakfast on Saturday. We only have a few of those remaining. <coughs> it's pretty crazy how we're already um, more than halfway through this championship meet. And uh, it's uh, been a lot of fun so far. But come on out uh, on Saturday morning and uh, your best bet today. Best bet today is... Uh, Oh, yeah, that's right. A little bit early on at Atlanta, Alexander. Second time Lasix. Really moved forward with it last time. Uh, mine's early as well in race number two. Na Dudette and your long shot. Yeah, we're both on the turf, right, in different races. Yeah. Uh, I'm in race five with Click-A-Cat, who should be, I would think, now comfortably better than that 
morning line price because of the 13 drawn in. It's going to take plenty of money. Yep, that, that bodes well for mm -hmm. you. And he got his long shot home yesterday. I'm in the finale with Sam Buru. That is nine of them with you. We'll be yep. with uh, you throughout the whole day. But Pete will be upstairs, and he will give you the rundown. Not a lot to do with the scratches and changes. Good luck today.